In the early morning hours of the 6th of June 1944, the paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division, alongside their counterparts in the 101st Airborne, jumped into Normandy as part of Operation Overlord. Although the drop was scattered and chaotic, by the late afternoon on D-Day, a link had been created between the 4th Division at Utah Beach and the Airborne Divisions inland, thus creating a vital beachhead on the Cotentin Peninsula. The creation of this firm lodgement area in this region allowed for much needed reinforcements to be brought in over the following days, including the 325th Glider Infantry Regiment of the 82nd Airborne, whose gliders began touching down the landing zone W at 0700 on the 7th of June. Their landing, however, didn't come without its own problems, as noted in the 325th Regimental History. The landing zone proved to be smaller than anticipated, and the hedges and trees around the fields much higher than expected. There were many crash landings and some opposition from small arms fire. Mortar shells also dropping in the landing areas. Nonetheless, the bulk of the 325 managed to assemble and begin moving off on its assigned objectives, with its 1st Battalion receiving orders on the 8th of June to move off and make contact with elements of the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment that are still cut off from the rest of the 82nd. Setting off at 2300 on the 8th, the battalion crossed the Murderout River by means of a railway bridge to the north of Lafayette, prior to swinging southwards in the direction of Corkney. During its night advance, 1st Battalion, despite encountering small, isolated pockets of German resistance, established contact with the detachment of the 507th in an area to the east of Amphreville. After this link had been achieved, the battalion continued on to Corkney, where, as the 325th Regimental History recounts, at 0400 on the 9th of June, the battalion moved across the low ground in front of the position held by the group from the 507th to attack the Germans defending the bridge crossing the Murderout River west of Lafayette. In the vicinity of Corkney, the battalion ran into strong German resistance from a force which was later determined to consist of about one regiment supported by artillery. The fighting developed into isolated actions by small groups. One such group that had become isolated was a platoon from C Company which had attempted to outflank the German positions and had become cut off in doing so. Pinned down in a roadside ditch, the platoon's position was becoming increasingly untenable as the German troops closed in and increased the weight of fire being laid down onto the Gliderborn infantry. Subsequently, the decision was made for the platoon to withdraw through a gap in a hedgerow adjacent to the ditch and make its way back to the rest of 1st Battalion. However, to do so, the platoon would be completely exposed to the German infantry, leading to Private First Class Charles de Glopper volunteering to lay down cover in fire for his colleagues. Grabbing his M1918 Browning automatic rifle, Private de Glopper climbed out from the ditch, walked out into the middle of the road, and began laying down cover in fire for his platoon. Almost immediately, the Germans switched their attention onto the Private, who emptied magazine after magazine into the direction of the German troops, when he was struck for the first time. Despite this, Private the Glopper held onto his BAR and remained in his position, before being hit again and forced into a kneeling stance. Although continuously losing strength, Private First Class Charles de Glopper maintained a wolf covering fire for his platoon until he was hit for a third time, this time sadly proving fatal. Behind him, his colleagues successfully disengaged and managed to link back up with the rest of 1st Battalion, who was similarly in a difficult position as recorded on a regimental situation map. Battalion forced into perimeter defence against heavy odds to consolidate lines and hold crossing gained in face of heavy artillery, mortar and automatic fire, many officer and troop casualties sustained. On receiving news of 1st Battalion's situation, the 82nd Airborne Divisional Headquarters ordered the 3rd Battalion of the 325, reinforced by elements of the 507th and with tank and artillery support, to establish a bridgehead across the Murderette River and relieve 1st Battalion. Beginning at 10.30 on the 9th of June, 3rd Battalion attacked across the river and, despite suffering heavy casualties, secured the western bank of the Murderette and had seized Corkney by 15.30. 3rd Battalion successfully forced the daylight crossing of the Murderette River to relieve enemy pressure on isolated 1st Battalion. 3rd Battalion affected Union to establish 1st Bridgehead west of the Murderette. Casualties were heavy, Bridgehead consolidated. <laughs>